that's not a great angle. <laughs> Welcome to another week. Um, actually, maybe that's better. Do I look younger? <laughs> anyway, um, I'm getting more and more mobile since my knee injury, if you don't know. Um, I won't bang on about it, but I dislocated my left knee um, six or seven weeks ago now. But that's meant that there's quite a lot of projects on the property that have gone into hiatus. Um, and I'm at one now, and I'm going to see if it's something I can carry on with. So let's have a quick look. I'm at the fence that surrounds my orchard. A while ago, I had removed a section because we want to dismantle this whole fence. We don't want this as an orchard anymore. We've got another spot for that in mind that's better. But in order to access it properly and to do what we do want to do in here, I have to take this fence down. So I was gifted for Christmas this tool, which I've not used yet and I've never used before. But the, the, the idea of this is that it'll help me remove these staples that's holding the chicken wire in place. It's a little bit complicated because there's two layers of chicken wire and this one's the, the lower layer is slightly buried underground so that's quite hard to remove. But all I really want to do today is see if I can use this tool to remove the chicken wire and then Will's acquired a stump lifter. So if I can remove the chicken wire, get this clear, it means that Will can have a go with the stump lifter and then we'll be able to see if we're all good to go to remove the whole fence. So I'm going to have a try. Wish me luck. Not that you can see, but I've made a start. So this section and this section is gone. We're only really wanting to, as I say, test the stump lifter. Um, I've just got this lower section to remove and I was also able to remove the wire from the top which is holding it all up. That was quite annoying. I'm going to have to call it a day now because I'm actually off to get my hair cut in a bit. So I want to try and make myself look a bit more presentable and hopefully I can finish this off presently in the next few days or so. But anyway, made a start and we'll keep you updated. Maybe show you how the stump, if the stump lifter works. That's me, just been to the hairdressers. Sorry, wobbling you about. <laughs> what do you think? I think it's excellent. <laughs> I just made it look a bit mad anyway. <laughs> I think it's excellent. Very happy with that. And now we're off to see a film called Cocaine Bear. Um, you may have gathered I'm a sucker for films with mad names like Violet Night, Hot Tub Time Machine, and now we're off to see Cocaine Bear. So uh, this has been a very pleasant afternoon after all the fun and games of doing bits and pieces on the property, including working on the fence, a very different afternoon to my morning. So uh, I'll call it a day here and I'll maybe update you um, at some point soon about uh, how I felt about Cocaine Bear. But uh, we're looking forward to that and I will catch up with you anon. You join us on a lovely summer's morning. We're off to do something that I haven't done for ages, really since we've moved to Australia, only a few times that I love doing. And that is, we're off to, um, let me show you. <laughs> we're off to forage some of these lovely blackberries. You may remember me mentioning that blackberries are considered a scourge and we're supposed to get rid of them. <laughs> Luckily, our neighbors don't agree with that. And so, uh, there's loads all the way down the drive. So we'll have to get some and then I'll take them home and make some lovely things that I'll tell you about in due course. Can you see them? They're just all down the fence. And look how beautiful this morning is. Our hall. Just over two kilos of fruit there, and Will's picking some more for luck. 
We're back home now and um, I decided that I'm going to make two pretty simple recipes with our um, blackberry haul. I'm going to make a raspberry vinegar and I'm going to make a raspberry shrub. A uh, shrub is like an alcoholic liqueur. Um, I made it before using some of our uh, red currants. Um, I've never tried it with blackberries before, but um, you know they're free and bountiful, so I thought I'd give it a try. Um, and if it works, then um, we'll be having that as our winter mass tipple. If you don't know, winter mass is the celebration we have to celebrate the winter solstice, which here is um, late July, uh, late June, um, because um, Christmas is in summer and that's just weird. So well, we have a secondary Christmas Eve celebration in, in winter. Anyway, um, and the vinegar should be awesome for all sorts of purposes. It ought to go on salads and it'll enhance um, roasted vegetables and you can even add it to things like yogurts and ice creams. So very versatile. We don't really eat a lot of jam, so um, there's no point making jam really. These recipes are very simple. They practically make themselves, so I'm just going to start them off now. For the vinegar, I start by adding the blackberries to a nice big bowl. I'm aiming to get to a kilo. Then I give them a bit of a squash with a wooden spoon. Then I add 600 ml of apple cider vinegar. Then I cover it and I set it aside to chill for a few days. For the uh, blackberry shrub, I start again by adding a kilo of blackberries to a bowl. I then add the blackberries to a nice big saucepan. I add some water, I added 450 ml. Then I put this on a gentle heat and allow it to simmer for quite a long time. After about an hour, I strain it through a, a scorched jam bag and I allow it to drip. There we go. Quite a lot of liquid just came straight through. And the rest will slowly, slowly drip out. This is what it looks like inside. Steamy. We are now good to go with the next stage of the shrub. I have before me 600 ml of brandy. Um, rum's also a possibility, but I like brandy. I've got zest freshly grated of an orange and I've got about a teaspoon of freshly grated nutmeg. I also have sterilized two glass jars that I'm going to put the liquid into. So what I need to do now is add the blackberry juice to the brandy, add these other ingredients, slosh it around, put it in my jars. The jars then go in a cupboard for a wee while and then after that <laughs> We embark upon stage two of the shrub and um, the blackberry vinegar is also partially made, you would have seen. So all I did there was um, add the blackberries to some apple cider vinegar. That's in the guest bedroom behind me. That'll be there for a number of days. And then we'll be moving on to phase two of that. So it's a multi-step process, but really very, very simple for both recipes. So I'll come back to you when we're ready to progress with phase two. You might have seen in a video or two ago that I had tried to protect the house from the uh, ingress of rats by filling in what I thought was the hole where they get in. But um, it turned out that that failed because last night when I was dead in bed, I could hear a rat scratching in the wall in the bathroom. So I could want to show you my um, modified anti-rat measure. <laughs> And um, it involves taking you underground, so let me show you what I've done. The eagle-eyed amongst you might have noticed I'm in my bathroom, and um, 
just where the sink is, there's this little hatch. And if I lift up the hatch, this is a little space under the house. And what I've done is I have set the trap under the house in the bathroom. So they seem to love the bathroom. They also love going in the walls and all about. So I thought maybe rather than having it outside, I'll try it underground. Let's see if I have any success with this new technique. The system worked. Don't, don't disturb it yet. Just do it. Right, hang on. 2023 rat tally number one. And uh, you can see that it's quite content with this little snack and uh, a little well, portrait of it. <laughs> Will's taking the trouble to uh, to sketch it, to capture its likeness um, before we release it very far away from the house, back into the wild, but as you can see, it's not harmed, it's not panicking, it's just chilling. So we can, uh, so we can rehome it. Chilling? <laughs> Poor thing's terrified. No, it's not. Look, it's even quite interested in the peanut biscuit. <laughs> it's interesting getting out of the cage. No, look, it's having a wash. It is Aww. having a wash, to be fair. Can we it's... keep it as a pet? Um, maybe not this type of rat. This type of rat's probably a bit manky. Uh, it's cute. I thought you might like to see the rat in a bit more detail. Hello, Rat. And uh, this is the uh, portrait I, I did of the Rat. I've realised there are a couple of loose ends, things I've never got around to updating you on, so I thought I'd take the opportunity quickly. First of all, I'll start here. Sorry about the reflections. You may or may not remember that I had this Stanley Donwood print that I was taking to the framers. So uh, here it is. This beautiful frame. Pride of place on my wall. Very pleased with that. And then you may have, you may have caught a glimpse next to it is my uh, artwork that I entered for the East Gippsland um, Small Artwork Prize. Um, and it's called Happiness, and as you can see, uh, it didn't sell, <laughs> which is why it's on my wall. Nevertheless, I'm very happy with that. I think it's a lovely picture. I don't know why no one wanted it. <laughs> and then that's, um, that's the grouping we have here. Oh, that's Will's granddad, by the way. The other thing I haven't updated you on is the snake shed, which we have now more or less finished. So the things that we have done that are different to when you saw it last is we've put this clear uh, perspex over what was just chicken wire. Um, that's less light in, but also protects the things inside it from water, from the rain. Uh, we we did the same on the door. We haven't yet done the lock, but um, that's just minor. Will's made this door jam so that when the door closes it's got something to close against and then I've started moving in some of my gardening stuff the final things you have to do obviously is move in the rest of our tools and equipment and we're going to put that metal shelving here but um you know you don't you can use your imaginations you don't really need to see it full of stuff but uh, the point is that from, in terms of infrastructure, the whole building's now finished. And as you can see, even with that perspex, it's still light enough. Another modification I think I might do is I'm, I'm thinking about getting a solar light. So there'll be a little solar panel on the roof outside and a light in here. And I'm thinking either a sort of motion sensor light or one with a switch. Um, so I think it might be nice to have light in here if we're in here when it's dark. Um, the other thing I wanted to say was all of this material that we used to do the snake shed, the, the wood for the pastes, the bench tops and this plastic um, is all free. <laughs> so it's all, it's all recycled, all repurposed. 
either stuff we had lying around or stuff other people had lying around that they kindly gave to us. So this is a very cheap project and we're all for that. And the last thing I want to show you is this. Much better than last week.